Okay, next one. Uh, in listening skills, we're I think we're in chapter seven now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, following a lecture or talk, um, we'll have to practice identifying main ideas. So, uh, in the listening paper, we will have to focus on the main points that are made by the speaker. Okay, so uh, this is something important for us to do. Um, in this conversation, we're going to listen to a paleontologist. A paleontologist is a person or a scientist who studies dinosaurs and fossils. Like an archaeologist is a person who studies old and ruined uh, historical buildings. That person is an archaeologist. A person who studies uh, uh, dinosaurs and fossils is a paleontologist. Okay. Okay, now we're going to listen to this paleontologist. Okay, so when we're going to listen to them, just look at these phrases. You're going to have to put them in order. Okay, they're, they're not in a sequence. You're going to have to put them in order. Okay, so he's talking about the very first field trip I went on. It's an ancestor of modern Australian wombat. It's a, fun, a funny looking piece of rock. An old professor studying dried up dinosaur bones. I immediately changed course. I had to do a compulsory unit on extinction. So just uh, you've just viewed them now. I'm going to play it and then you're going to have to rearrange them. Recording 27. Good morning, everyone. My name is John and I'm a paleontologist. Now, when most people hear that, they immediately get an image of an old professor studying dried up dinosaur bones or else they think of a great adventurer from the movies. Well, I'm neither. But I would like to talk to you today about how I came to be a paleontologist and the reason I believe it is an important job. All my life, my main interest has been the environment. So I actually started out as an ecology student. As part of my degree course, I had to do a unit on extinction and a lecturer visiting from another university gave us a talk on Australia's extinct animals. One of the animals he talked about was called the Diprotodon. It's an ancestor of the modern Australian wombat. He described this enormous animal crossing ancient lakes, getting stuck in the mud and becoming part of the fossil record, which is what we call the preserved remains of animals and plants that we find. And I was fascinated. So fascinated that I immediately changed courses. But paleontology isn't all easy going. The very first field trip I went on was pretty awful. We went to an outback fossil site and we were digging in extreme conditions. I've learned since that that's pretty standard for work like this. But to make matters worse, after five days I'd found nothing. I was getting really disheartened and I was starting to regret my decision when on the last day of the trip, I was digging into the bank of an ancient dried up riverbed and found a funny looking piece of rock. Inside it was a tooth from a giant kangaroo. Finding that one fossil made me realise that this was a field I really wanted to continue working in. Okay. So, so this is uh, the whole, in this monologue he's basically telling that how he came to uh, how he decided to take the field of becoming a paleontologist okay so uh, the first one uh, w w which was the first uh, sentence yeah yeah an old professor studying dried up bones so this one goes at number one okay and number two what was the or oh yeah I had to do a compulsory unit on extension number three Yeah, it's an ancestor of the modern Australian wombat. Okay, number four. Yeah, I immediately changed courses after this. Uh, number five. Yeah, the very first field trip I went on. Number six. Yeah, I found a funny piece of rock. Now, uh, he's talking about a diprotodon, something like that. And he said it is... Uh, uh, the wombat is an ancestor of that. Uh, this is his guess. So this is the Australian wombat. Okay, just to make it clear to you, wombat. Okay, so he mentions this wombat over here, just to show you the image. I was opening this at that time. So this is the Australian wombat. Okay. 
Um, okay, so 1.2, which of the following describes the main topic of the talk? Important lectures Paul has given, describing the process that led to Paul's current role, explaining how ancient Australian animals became extinct. B. Yeah, he's basically talking about how uh, he became a paleontologist, so how he acquired his current role. This is what he's talking about. That's the main thing that he's talking about. That's the main topic. Okay. Uh, it's a paleontologist. Okay. It means a person who studies dinosaurs. Have you seen dinosaurs? Okay. A person who studies dinosaurs. Those. That person is a paleontologist. Okay. Um. The question in the IELTS listening paper focuses on the main points of the talk. In between the points, the speaker may also mention things that are not directly related to the main purpose of the talk. Okay, that's we're getting used to that. Uh, we also, uh, in the starting exercise, did something called the distractors. So distractors are related to that. These are uh, from the main points. You're going to listen uh, to things that are distracting you away from the main point. This is what they're trying to tell over here. Okay. Think about your answer to 1.2 and listen again. Which three phrases are used to give information that is directly related to the main purpose of the talk? Okay. So, the, what was the main purpose of the talk? First of all, that's the question. Okay. So, we're, now we're going to have to tell those three main points. Uh, or uh, those uh, three main phrases that he's using in order to tell uh, how he became a paleontologist. Okay, that's what it, we're, we're supposed to do. Okay, let's play again, and I hope you find them easily. Okay. Recording twenty-seven. Good morning, everyone. My name is John, and I'm a paleontologist. Now, when most people hear that they immediately get an image of an old professor studying dried up dinosaur bones, or else they think of a great adventurer from the movies. Well, I'm neither. But I would like to talk to you today about how I came to be a paleontologist and the reason I believe it is an important job. All my life, my main interest has been the environment. So I actually started out as an ecology student. As part of my degree course, I had to do a unit on extinction and a lecturer visiting from another university gave us a talk on Australia's extinct animals. One of Okay, so one point is over here that he had to attend this unit on extinction, on extinction. Okay, so this was also going to lead him in the future to decide to become a paleontologist. Okay. The animals he talked about was called the diprotodon. It's an ancestor of the modern Australian wombat. He described this enormous animal crossing ancient lakes, getting stuck in the mud and becoming part of the fossil record, which is what we call the preserved remains of animals and plants that we find. And I was fascinated. So fascinated that I immediately changed courses. But paleontology isn't all easy going. Okay, so the second one, now he's changing his course. So he's going towards paleontology. This is the second phrase that is telling, that is a uh, second sentence that is telling that he's going towards paleontology, okay? The very first field trip I went on was pretty awful. We went to an outback fossil site and we were digging in extreme conditions. I've learned since that that's pretty standard for work like this. But to make matters worse, after five days I'd found nothing. I was getting really disheartened and I was starting to regret my decision when, on the last day of the trip, I was digging into the bank of an ancient dried up riverbed and found a funny looking piece of rock. Inside it was a tooth from a giant kangaroo. Finding that one fossil made me realise that this was a field I really wanted to continue working in. Okay, so after five days he was, uh, he didn't find anything, but what did he find that uh, yeah, now the funny rock is again taking him towards that paleontology site. So this is the third thing. Uh, huh? Uh, uh, no, no, five days. I, five days, he didn't find anything. 
I, and then he found this funny piece of rock, okay, which encouraged him to continue his paleontology studies, okay. So those were the three phrases, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, you may be asked to complete a summary in the listening paper. This can look difficult, so it will help to break down the information. Look at the summary below and write questions related to the information missing from each gap. Okay, so there's going to be a question related to each gap. Okay, what do we need to know over here? So there's a question that uh, arises over here. Okay. So, um, Paul was interested in the, so took an ecology course at university, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the question. Uh, what was Paul interested in, okay? What was Paul interested in? The second one, the course included a section on and an interesting lecture caused him to change quickly, yeah. That's exactly right. What did the course include? Yeah, that's we're gonna fill f fill that. Actually, uh, the course included a section on extinction. Okay, but over here, before filling these gaps, what we are required as to make questions of what these gaps will contain. Okay, so. We're making a question over here, what did the course contain, okay? The third one, Paul says working in paleontology can be difficult as he describes the conditions as, okay, so what, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what, what are the conditions? So we need to know, does he describes the conditions as, so what does he describe the conditions as? What are the conditions, okay? However, the discovery of a, uh, from an ancient antim animal, uh, yeah. What 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 was the discovery? Okay, what did he discover? Okay, is it clear? Uh, okay, okay. It's uh, uh, what did he discover? Okay, now. Uh, it's saying that uh, listen again and complete it with one word only. So you see, generally you will see find this in the IELTS exam. One word only, it's bold and it's capital. It means only one word, okay? Let's uh, listen to it again. Okay, wait. Oh. Recording 27. Good morning, everyone. My name is John, and I'm a paleontologist. Now, when most people hear that, they immediately get an image of an old professor studying dried up dinosaur bones or else they think of a great adventurer from the movies. Well, I'm neither. But I would like to talk to you today about how I came to be a paleontologist and the reason I believe it is an important job. All my life, my main interest has been the environment. So I actually started out as an ecology student. As part of my degree course, I had to do a unit on extinction and a lecturer visiting from another university gave us a talk on Australia's extinct animals. One of the animals he talked about was called the Diprotodon. It's an ancestor of the modern Australian wombat. He described this enormous animal crossing ancient lakes, getting stuck in the mud and becoming part of the fossil record, which is what we call the preserved remains of animals and plants that we find. And I was fascinated. So fascinated that I immediately changed courses. But paleontology isn't all easy going. The very first field trip I went on was pretty awful. We went to an outback fossil site and we were digging in extreme conditions. I've learned since that that's pretty standard for work like this. But to make matters worse, after five days I'd found nothing. I was getting really disheartened and I was starting to regret my decision when, on the last day of the trip, I was digging into the bank of an ancient dried up riverbed and found a funny looking piece of rock. Inside it was a tooth from a giant kangaroo. Finding that one fossil made me realise that this was a field I really wanted to continue working in. All right. So Paul was interested in the uh, environment. And the course included a section on 
extinction. Yeah, extinct animals or extinction. Okay, so uh, describes the conditions as uh, yeah extreme. Yeah, extreme. They're extreme. He said extreme clearly. However, the discovery of dash from an ancient animal. No, no. Yeah, no, no. The, the, yeah, the, what did they discover of that kangaroo? They they discovered the tooth of a kangaroo. Don't you recall? A, a tooth. A tooth of a kangaroo. So the discovery of a tooth from an ancient animal made he realize that he made uh, the right decision. Okay. All right. Next. Uh huh. What what things? Actually, they they make guesses and uh, um, they categorize animals. There's a difference of opinion in terms of evolution, but uh, there is uh, uh, generally this uh, is quite evident that uh, animals uh, go under adaptations according to different uh, conditions that they are exposed to. So when we research previous animals according to carbon dating, we also find uh, what kind of uh, animals, uh, what changes occurred, uh, somewhat changes uh, in or what species of other animals were also living. Uh, currently now only in this century also uh, or in the previous century there have been many species that have become extinct okay like uh, not very long ago the first one of the extinct thing was the uh, dodo bird uh, another thing that was extinct was the carrier pigeon which is very uh, commonly known it was used uh, I think in the world wars and the carrier pigeon it carried uh, uh, messages from one place to another place so the whole carrier pigeons uh, they, they completely became uh, uh, extinct uh, they uh, they found one carrier pigeon and they were searching for another mate for it but they couldn't hello yeah so they couldn't find uh, a mate for it and uh, uh, eventually uh, they just stuffed uh, that pigeon when it died so that species is also extinct. Uh, one interesting fact is that over here in Kalar Kahar, they found dinosaur fossils uh, near a village over here. But nobody took care of it for this. That is why these paleontologists, they are required. It's a very uh, delicate process to uh, dig out these bones and make them remain intact. And then they make uh, uh, the whole structure of the animal and they get different types and different types of dinosaurs like some of the common names are like the stegosaurus the trinosaurus rex these are different types of dinosaurs that they discovered so he's going through another discovery himself he was interested in it so that's what he was sharing over here all right all right now next the information listening summary can help you to keep track of a talk look at recording script 27 and compare it to the summary is the information in the summary I in the same order as the script? Okay. Was this information same uh, as, or is this information same in the same order as uh, he said it in the script? The course included a section on, then he changed his degree, and then he found a tooth from an ancient animal. Yeah, it's in the same uh, order. Okay. Next, uh, they're saying to complete the table. Okay, so we've done quite a lot, and we've heard it twice, okay, so I'll just uh, come tell you how uh, to complete it. My main interest has been, so he was, they were talking about, uh, Paul was interested in paleontology, uh, environment, and second, uh, as a part of my degree course, I had to complete a compulsory unit, okay. Uh, third, uh, an interesting lecture. He had an interesting lecture. Fourth, uh, uh, he immediately changed courses. Fifth, uh, he found uh, uh, the discovery. Uh, he he found he discovered something over here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he found that rock. I think so over here. Okay, and it was uh, a tooth from a giant kangaroo. Okay. So they're helping over here, okay? They're helping you over here. 
my main interest has been so Paul was interested in the environment the course included a section on so the audio script what does it contain so it's like vice versa they're helping you in both places uh, from here a lecture I, I was fascinated like uh, three and uh, so the summary was an interesting lecture okay and uh, when he changed his degree uh, he changed courses okay uh, okay and he found uh, we're talking about a rock and but he found uh, uh, and over here he said the discovery of him uh, okay in the summary we can say the discovery of uh, so this is kind of like paraphrasing uh, we are using it on both sides how they are interchangeable how they can be used uh, yeah instead of each other you know yeah in the audio script this is the real script the audio script and in the summary which is over here actually uh, what are the changes that they made so instead of going uh, and listening to all of it again I just told you what this question is about because I don't think it's necessary that much to do it if somebody thinks it's necessary they can go back in the video listen to the recording again and come back here and solve this okay